Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I can see new students are here today. Roshan, Sonal, and Richa. Can I get a bit intro about you? Yes, yes Sonal, start with you. Yes, ma'am. I am studying in Budhavali school in class 9th. Okay. Next, uh, Roshan. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I am also st studying in Budhavali school in a standard 10th. Okay, you are from standard 10th. Then, Richa. Ma'am, I am also uh, reading uh, uh, Budhavali school and st standard 9th. Okay, 9th standard. Okay, so we will start this session now. Is uh, wait a minute. Is my screen visible to all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so tell me any topic do you want uh, to convey, or should I convey by myself? Ma'am, please go through with the heredity and evolution. Heredity and evolution. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Heredity and evolution is a chapter, I think, in your uh, book, right? In biology book? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. First of all, uh, tell me what is heredity? Can anyone uh, tell here what is heredity? Yes, Roshan. Ma'am, the degree of similarity is called heredity. Yes, the degree of similarity. Correct. When one generation actually, uh, it is it is something like degree of similarity. Or we can say the amount of similarity, how much the first generation of an organism matches with it with its next generation or second generation and we can calculate it in some degrees that's why it is called as a degree of similarity how much they are similar mostly humans are similar to everyone like uh, humans are similar to one another it's something like 99.9% .9 of humans are similar to each other only our DNA, which is not similar, is lacking by 0.1. Okay. So this 0.1 makes what? Evolution. This 0.1 percentage makes, when it rises more, it makes evolution. Here you understood heredity. Evolution means, evolution comes when? Evolution comes when the degree of heredity increases in that much amount, uh, this symbol I use for increases, okay? Whenever I use this symbol, that means increasing. And whenever I use this one symbol, that means decreasing. The degree of heredity increases in such amount, which leads to change in body shape or function. When the heredity increases in such amount that, uh, sorry, degree of similarity increases in such amount that the change in body shape or function leads. Can you understand that? Are you getting Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me take an example here. Like uh, in the older times, uh, we may take at uh, 100 or 200 or millions of years ago, the uh, giraffe, you know, giraffe. What is the speciality we know uh, we see in giraffe? Can anyone see me? What is the speciality we see in giraffe? 
giraffe is having a long neck yes it has a long neck it is believed that our scientist believes that see don't uh, don't just uh, fully trust on scientists because at the time when evolution was going on scientists were not there they just assume things they just assume things on the theories on the mechanisms that have fallen so don't just trust 100% on scientists okay so so uh, scientists say that uh, earlier giraffe has a small neck but but the food that it eats the food that it eats is only available at height at much height of trees so that it could reach to the to the height the all the generations of giraffe just just stretch their uh, were stretching their necks or from generation to generation to reach that height and finally the evolution took place and giraffe got a long neck this is what our scientific theory says this is called as evolution did you got that yes ma'am okay let's take one more example here like we humans okay we humans were what we were in the earlier times what we were in the early stages ma'am homo sapiens homo sapiens homo sapiens is our binomial nomenclature name it is not uh, what we are we are homo sapiens i am asking what we were when uh, when the human generation started what we were at that time what uh, animal we were what was the name of that animal man monkey apes we were apes you know about apes yes ma'am yes, ma yes. early humans early humans yes that's what i am asking uh, apes we were apes so apes has a tail you know that apes were having tail at that time yes ma'am yes they were having tail they were having a lot of hair on their whole body but we humans have developed from apes and we don't have that much hair on our whole, whole body also we don't have a tail okay so how does it disappeared it disappeared due to evolution actually when we were apes and we had a long tail we apes didn't needed tail for any function that tail was just a extra thing for our body it was just an extra thing and we didn't have uh, we didn't had dependency on that on that body part so since we didn't have, we didn't need, we didn't need tail for any of the functions so just evolution when when the evolution took place when the from generation to generation when evolution took place what happened there was a ape with long tail then after some generations there was a ape with some some long but not so long then after some generations there was a ape with bit small then after some generations there was a ape with a small one and after some generations there was a ape but there was no tail this is called as evolution okay and does evolution lead to no tail apes or we should say no tail humans without tail this is called as evolution is it understood is it understood am i audible to you all hello yes ma'am okay yes okay 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 and uh, one of you had just given a name here homo sapiens let us let us 
increase our knowledge in this name. What is Homo sapiens? Tell me. Just now I had I had just now told what is Homo sapiens. Abhinav, Abhinav joined. Yes, Abhinav, how are you? Ma'am. Uh, I think Abhinav, your uh, your network issue is there. I can't hear you clearly. Okay, just tell me what are uh, what is Homo sapiens? What is this name? Okay, let me tell. Our scientists have discovered. My our scientists. Our scientists have discovered a particular, particular uh, what we can say, a particular authorization of naming the organisms, plants, and or animals. Okay, that is called as binomial nomenclature. What is it? Actually, all the animals and all the plants and all the microorganisms or other organisms, they are known by different names in different regions, right? We call giraffe as giraffe. In Hindi, it may have any other name. In Telugu, it may have any other name. In Tamil, it may have any other name. So in order to give a particular name to all the organisms, to a particular organism, so that we can identify it in all the uh, study materials or in all the books or on the Google through single name. So that every one can signify or understand that it is. Okay. So in order to name them with a particular name, with a particular identity, this binomial nomenclature was discovered. It has some rules actually, like our name has a, a name, a, a single name and a surname. In the same way, binomial nomenclature names are also written as like this. Uh, they, it consists of two parts mainly, first part and second part. The first part is written the genes of the organism and the second part is written as the species of the organism. Okay, these are the two parts. The genes of the organism and the species of the organism. Like our human's name is Homo sapiens, right? So Homo is the genes and sapiens is the species. And thus our name is Homo sapiens. That's why we, name, we are named like that. Okay, now there are some rules of writing these names. We can't write these names just in a general break. The first rule of writing these names is, first rule is, the first, letter, uh, first word should be the genes and the second word should be the species. Then second rule is, whenever we write these names, they are written in italic form, not in bold letters. Third one is the first words, uh, first letter is always capital. First letter of first word will be capital. And fourth one is the second, first letter of second word. first letter of second word is always small. And the fifth rule is, they, it is always whenever we write this name or whenever we write uh, binomial nomenclature name of any of the organism or plant or animal, always underline it with a single line. Underline. These are some of the rules which to be followed while writing these names. Okay, is it understood? Yes. Okay. 
many students are present here. Why are you not responding? Hmm? Richa? Okay. Tell me any other topic then. Yes, students. What else you need to know from me? Or just to have a class? Ma'am, please recall it because I was just get disconnected. Oh, oh. you got disconnected. I, sh I think it is a recording right now. Oh. Uh, I just discussed about homo sapiens or binomial nomenclature. Do you know about that? No, ma'am. Okay, uh, the recording might be provided to you. Just I will uh, revise that one. Binomial nomenclature is an organized. Uh, it is it is an organized form so that we can name each and every organism through a particular name, through a particular identity. Like we humans have a particular identity. Like you have an identity like Roshan Giri. Your name is Roshan Giri. So yes. whenever I will call Roshan Giri, that means I'm calling you. So like that, every organism is given a particular identity with a name. So in order to provide a name, uh, it is binomial nomenclature is made. Okay. And it has some rules. The identity is made like that. The first name, first uh, name is the gene name, and second name is the species name. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and this gene and species name is written in a particular form. There are some rules. First, first rule is they are always written in italics. Second rule is. Okay, I will write here. We will just summarize it uh, fastly. First rule is they are always written in italics form. Second rule is first letter is always genes. And genes, are, or I should say genus. Okay, their genus. Then second uh, word is always their species. Third rule is the first letter of first word is always capital. And the sec, uh, next rule is first letter of second word is always a small. And the last rule is the name always should be underlined. Whenever you write a name of any a microorganism no. or plant and animal, it is always written as underlined. Okay, just uh, uh, what is this fourth rule? Fourth rule is uh, the uh, first letter of second word should be small. Like we write homo sapiens. Na? So it will go like this. First letter will be uh, capital. That is H. And uh, the sapiens. Sapiens first letter will be small. That is S. Okay. This one will be the fourth rule. And this is the third rule. Okay, next topic, what you want to know about? Tell me. Yes, Roshan. Ma'am, actually, I am reading this chapter, Heredity and Evolution. So, I asked okay. you. So, ma'am, it's our cross that is the heredity. <laughs> Characteristics uh, of the traits. Characteristics of? Traits. T -R -A -I -T. Characteristics of traits. traits. Okay, okay. Characteristics of traits. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just tell me uh, one by one the characteristics and I will explain here to you. Ma'am, that is uh, what? Uh, yes. Die hybrid or mono hybrid, these things. Die hybrid and mono hybrid. Yes, ma'am. Okay, dihybrid and monohybrid. Dihybrid, uh, actually, monohybrid is when only single trait is passed. Like uh, we can say, um, it is like that. 
लाइक रेड कलर फ्लावर इज क्रॉस्ड विथ येलो कलर फ्लावर ओके देन वॉट विल वी गेट द रेड कलर फ्लावर इज क्रॉस्ड विथ येलो कलर फ्लावर वी कैन मेक द अलील्स ऑफ रेड कलर फ्लावर एज कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर एंड येल्लो कलर फ्लावर एज स्मॉल आर स्मॉल आर लाइक दिस ओके वेन वी कंबाइन दैम दे विल कम एज लाइक दिस वी विल राइट हियर for these two it will make this for these two that means combination of red and yellow this is a mono hybrid cross because single trait is involved right these are called traits traits means a particular functionality or a particular function okay so this is a mono hybrid cross di hybrid crosses Let's clear the canvas. In dihybrid cross, two traits are taken. Like we will tell here, we will take here a red color flower with long height that is tall, and a yellow color flower which is short. Okay. Now we will uh, take out its alleles like that. for red color it will be it will be capital r capital r and for tall we will take capital t capital t okay for yellow we will take small r small r and for short we will take small t small t these will be the alleles for this okay for a single trait there are two alleles always uh, always remember that for a single trait there will be two alleles like tall here i have taken two capital t's like for short here i have taken two small t's similarly for yellow small two small r's and for red two capital r's now when we will cross them i need more space here when we will cross them we will write like this Wait a second. When we we'll, uh, when we will cross them, it will uh, come like. Like this. Are you getting my? Yes, ma'am. But the voice is little bit cracking. Okay, I think some network connection is issue is there. Now, is it audible? Is it clear now? Yes. No, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. Now again, it's cracking. Hello. Ma'am, now it's clear. Okay, so it will come like this. Now here in this column, now here in this, we have two alleles, two sim, uh, two type, two traits are there. One is of colored trait, that is, it could be red or it could be yellow. Like this is for color of the flower. Okay, and another is for tall or dwarf trait, that is. it is for height of the flower right correct so two two traits are involved here one is color second is height so we will tell what this is a di hybrid cross that means two traits are involved and in the previous one only single trait is involved that was the color of the flower and hence it was what it was a mono hybrid cross understood is it clear to you yes ma'am okay next one is yes tell me the next one ma'am you can go with your topics okay tell me any topic if you want to understand yes richa abhinav 
and who all are others here? Okay, shall I go with my own topic? Uh, okay, I will decide one. Mm. Do anyone know about neurons or nervous system? Yes, ma'am. Nervous system is made up of a particular kinds of cells. These particular kinds of cells are called as what? They are called as neurons. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. They are called as neurons. Like our body is made up of cells, different millions and trillions of cells. In the same way, nervous system is made up of a particular kinds of cells and they are called as neurons. And they never divide. Like uh, other cells of our body can divide and regenerate themselves. Like our finger cuts sometimes or something happens to us or some accident happens, the skin of that part develops automatically. Okay, after some time, it develops automatically. But if something happens with our brain or some tragedy happens with our brain, some paralysis thing or some accident or something like that, we can't re recover from that. Be why? Because these neurons can't divide. If they are spoiled or if they are just uh, uh, harmed, they remain as it is. They don't divide, they don't regenerate or they can't recover from any activity like that. Okay, so neurons maintain their number. They maintain their number from our birth only. Maintain number from birth. Like how many neuron cells we had at the time of birth, they remain as it is. And uh, some of you have seen the, its uh, diagram also. It looks like this. It looks like a tree. It has a nucleus like this. These are all the dendrites. And a long axon is there within a neuron. This is called as axon. And here are simple root type structures are there okay the, the the root type structures are called as exonites this is the nucleus a simple introduction of neurons okay they are just they are uh, all over our body and they are they and receptive functions to our body can anyone say me what is stimulus and response functions or receptive functions of body? Do anyone know about this? Okay, no one knows. Okay, I will tell. Actually, you all know about this, but you don't uh, you don't know the name. Okay, whenever you touch any bowl of water which is so hot. And just your mind says that it is very hot. You just remove your fingers from there. This is called as stimulus or responsive functions. Actually, we have these neurons in whole our body just combined from one to another like this. One neuron combined to a next neuron. Then this next neuron is combined to another neuron. And in this way, it, they, all the neurons of our body goes to nervous system. That is our brain. And whenever we touch to any, uh, any, anything, like it may be cold, it may be hot, it may be anything. And our brain in nanoseconds, the stimulus signifies, the, identifies the thing. And our brain says to us that just remove your hand from that. It is very hot or it is very cold or you may get harmed or something like that. and responsive functions and we have these only due to neurons you should have uh, you might have uh, uh, i am audible to all am i audible to all yes, yes. yes. Uh, also you have seen you would have seen like uh, in some of the 
in some of the patients who are suffering from paralysis they don't sense anything if they get something hot or cold touch to that part where paralysis is there they can't sense it why because the functionality of that particular part or the neurons which are functional to that particular part are dead they can't function anymore that's why their responsive or stimulus functions are not so altered they can't function okay is it understood to all hello yes ma'am okay next let's uh, see about uh, something new uh, like in heart we have a different types of muscles particularly special kinds of muscles we have in heart what are they anyone can name that yes ma'am what's name of it ma'am cardiac muscle yes cardiac muscles and they are no were found in our body other than other than heart is on they are located in heart only because first of all they are involuntary muscles do you know what muscles or we should say involuntary instead of involuntary we should say involuntary muscles what are involuntary muscles ma'am those muscles in which yeah. we can't control yes those muscles in which we can't control correct two types of muscles in our body one are voluntary and second one are involuntary voluntary are those which we can we can control by ourselves like hands hand muscles or legs muscles limbs muscles and all things like that but involuntary are those which we can't control by ourselves and the cardiac muscles lie in them okay so cardiac muscles are different from other muscles because they have a particular function of protecting our heart from different types of shocks protecting heart from shocks and that's why they are different from other muscles cardiac muscles okay they are involuntary in function next one we will see is kidney let's let's see what is a kidney okay kidney is involved in which system can anyone tell me what ma'am kidney is involved in which human system ma'am excretory system yes it is involved in ex excretory system sorry excretory system yes then kidney how many kidneys do we have uh, m2 how many do we have we have two kidneys yes two kidneys two. two kidneys with two ureters with one urethra and one urinary bladder right now anyone tell me what are these cells present in kidney the specialized cells present in kidney ma'am hmm nephrons yes nephrons nephrons are the specialized cells which are present inside the kidney these are the particular cells there are millions of nephrons present in the kidney they are what they are main uh, this actually abhinav your mic is on okay nephrons what is the main function of ne nephrons is they filter out everything they filter out the waste material from the nutritious material which our body needs okay and that's why they are present in kidney this is the main function of nephrons and hence they are not present in any other part of our body they are only present in kidney because kidney has the only function to filter out blood okay what is the main function of kidney it filters blood this is the main function of kidney 
everyone got that and then function of nephrons function of nephrons is to filter out blood they uh, nephrons are the part of kidney na and they are found inside kidney like kidney is the kidney is the outer structure and inside nephrons are present small small cells are present those cells are called as nephrons and these cells actually filter out okay they have uh, they have more things like glomerular apparatus and all things different things are present inside nephrons which filter out the blood okay okay ma'am okay next anyone have any doubt regarding this ma'am tissue tissue yes ma'am hello abina ma'am tissue tissue yes ma'am are you asking yes, about tissue okay yes tissue okay in uh, tissue actually uh, tissue is made up of different types after uh, okay just see this one our body is made up of different types of tissues okay first one of them is epithelium tissue right okay just abhinav name those tissues can you name them do you know no ma'am hey, ma'am it in the class 9 uh, it's the chapter of biology and the heading of chapter yes. this is sorry asked yes i know it is a chapter of biology i i'm just asking can you name them can you name no. the tissues names mm. okay 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 first of all epithelium tissue is present in our body then there is an squamous epithelium tissue also present in our body then one is uh columnoid epithelium like that many uh, many tissues are present in our body okay so out of this the most important one is epithelium tissue why because it is present in our outermost skin and hence our skin is protected from this tissue uh this provides us the protective covering epithelium tissue provides us the uh, protective covering okay that's why epithelium tissue is present in our body then squamous epithelium is found in mostly linings of different uh, systems and different uh, parts body parts we can say uh, organs of the body like lining of kidney then lining of uh, lining of stomach there it is found squamous epithelium then columnoid epithelium it is found in different other, other layings like of small intestine and large intestine and in small intestine there is a particular there is a particular structure is present small structures are present they are called as villi these are the small structures present inside this columnoid epithelium in small intestine and why are they present actually this villi what is does it increases the surface area increases the surface area for digestion of food in the last class i have told you that digestion of food mainly majorly takes place in small intestine so this villi really is uh, this villi really is the main functionality of small intestine due to which the digestion majorly does in small intestine so what does it do it increases the surface area for digestion of food and hence the nutrients are absorbed are absorbed so easily okay is it understood yes ma'am uh, then i think in that tissue chapter plant tissues are also explained actually plant tissues are called as vascular tissues vascular bundles they are called as vascular bundles we will i will explain that to here 
so that you will get an idea about this and you can easily read the chapter and understand that plant issues are uh, actually called as what they are actually called as they are named as vascular tissues or we can say vascular bundles these vascular bundles are made up of two types one is xylem and other one is phloem xylem and phloem okay now here in this xylem and phloem, actually, the plant does like this. Like here, a plant is there. It has leaves, it has roots, it has food and uh, everything else. Then here, roots are also present. Okay, so what does xylem and phloem does? The main function of xylem is to carry. function. Uh, xylems are mainly present here only. In the root tips or roots. The main function of xylem is to provide water and minerals. Provide water and minerals from soil to all parts. This is the function of xylem. Okay, then the function of phloem is, what is the function of phloem? The main function of phloem is, it provides food to all parts of body, all parts of plant, so that they can survive easily. This is the main function of phloem. Then xylem and phloem are subdivided into different, uh, different parts. Xylem is divided into four parts, I think, basically. One is xylem vessels. Then xylem tracheids. Then uh, one, one more is parenchyma, parenchymatic xylem. Sorry. And like this. And uh, in the same way, uh, the phloem is also divided in companion cells, sieve tubes, sieve cells. These are some of the sub parts. And they have, they all have different, different functions. Like in phloem, their one diagram would be given like this. It is given like this. The sieve tubes and companion cells are present here in the same cells and their, their main work is to just transport food material from one part to all the parts from leaves to all the parts of the plant body from leaves be, uh, because the uh, photosynthesis happens in leaves only so where the food is made it is made in leaves so from leaves it is transferred to all parts of plant this is what it does okay is it understood hello am i audible yes ma'am okay richa you don't have any doubt Hmm? Ma'am. Okay, so you have everything cleared in your mind. Is it so? Okay, all right. Okay, just anyone can say me what is acid rain. Let me start any topic of myself. Can anyone yes, say me acid rain? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Yes. Ma'am, when yes, water... Ma'am, when, when the pH value of rain water is less than 5. Okay, I will note down your all answers. Okay. Roshan said, when pH value of rain water... pH value of rain water is? Less than 5. 
pollutants combined with rain these two definitions are also correct but a particular definition for this uh, acid rain is it happens when the pollutants like or the gaseous pollutants like actually the gases combines with them with the rain water gaseous pollutants mainly which gases mainly sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide when these two gases particularly yes and carbonic acid also yes yes and carbonic acid also carbon dioxide we can say carbon monoxide we can say or we can say the carbonic sorry carbonic acids we can say combine okay carbonic acids when these three pollutants combine with rain water making its ph or lowering its ph ph value by 6.5 or less than that it is called as what it is called as acid rain understood this is the particular definition you should always uh, while defining acid rain you should remember these three gases they are involved in acid rain okay let me ask another question also now can uh, anyone tell me something about global warming what is global warming yes roshan Ma'am, uh, in global warming, the temperature of the Earth is raising day by day. This is because of the greenhouse gas that is carbon dioxide, which absorbs the sun's heat and let it remain remain the heat. It absorb actually yeah. absorb the heat, so the temperature okay. increases temperature due to carbon dioxide, which remains inside the Earth, which remains inside after absorption from sun. right yes. and yes. it can't go outside back and hence the heating up of earth happens okay next abina yes ma'am yes ma'am the on rise in the ma'am on rise in the temperature of earth surface due to increasing the greenhouse uh, gases like car, uh, like carbon monoxide carbon dioxide because uh, carbon uh, dioxide trapped the sun energy that's that is called the global warming 
Okay, you have said this similar definition like this, only carbon monoxide you included. Okay, anyone else? Okay. What is global warming actually? Yes, you both have said the exact definition. It is the correct one. When our earth, like this is our earth and this is the sun, okay? When our earth, our earth has a layer here, which is called as ozone layer. When the sun UV rays comes inside the earth, these UV rays just incident on the earth and when they reflect back, after reflecting back, due to the presence of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, methane's formula is CH3. These gas, due to presence of these gas, these gas build up a path here which traps the heat of sun inside the earth's atmosphere. This uh, reflected back heat can't go out from our sphere due to this trapping. And when this trapping happens, the heat just, uh, just stays on the earth only. And what it does, it just heats up the earth. It just increases the temperature of the earth due to which our glaciers, our glaciers are melting. Our plants are uh, catching forest fires. Our water is evaporate. Water evaporation is much more increasing day by day, and this all happens due to increment of heat. And this is what called as global warming that you have said right now. Okay, it is clear from the word only global warming that is heating of globe or warming of earth. Okay. Also, why we say it as greenhouse effect? Why we say that is greenhouse effect? Can anyone tell me the reason? What is the reason that we tell it as greenhouse effect only? Why we can't say it as red house effect or white house effect or blue house effect? Yes, Abhinav. Ma'am, ma greenhouse uh, means the including of uh, what, uh, carbon monoxide or uh, carbon dioxide. And it is uh, happened due to this gas. That's why I think. Okay, so these gases are green in color. No, ma'am. Ma'am, greenhouse gases um, included the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, we say greenhouse as gases. Are, okay, so carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are called as greenhouse gases, right? So they are called as greenhouse as gases because in the greenhouse, green colored intensity, only these gas gets trapped. Like some when we uh, when we go to some nursery where plants are provided in higher quality or higher quantity, there they build up a glass house for plants. Have you seen someone uh, someone seen them? A green colored glass house is built up for plants to grow. A small plants are grown in those glass houses. Have you seen that anyone? No one saw that. Also in our homes, when uh, in summer seasons, we just hang the green colored net. Have you saw that? We hang the green colored net in, uh, in those areas where the sunlight comes so high. No one saw. This Am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Um, I have not seen. Okay, you have not seen. Actually, what happens, the plants in uh, when a, in a nursery, actually, mainly in nurseries where quantity of plants are grown in high amount, their greenhouses are built up, green colored glass houses. They are made up of glass houses. Okay. And these glass houses, what they do, what do they do? They just, when uh, plants reflect back CO2 uh, in the night time, when plants reflect back CO2, and absorbs O2. In the night time, plants reflect CO2 and absorbs O2. This CO2 gets trapped inside this glass house only. It can't go out. And the plants consume that same CO2 in the morning. And that's why CO2 is called as greenhouse gas. 
since it gets trapped in this greenhouse or green glass house. Okay, so whenever the earth gets warmed or gets heated up due to CO2 or CO, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, it is called as greenhouse effect. Like the effect seen as greenhouse glasses, the same effect is seen on the earth and hence we called it as greenhouse effect. Did you got that? Yes, ma'am. Did everyone got that? Okay, just today, uh, today search on Google that what are greenhouses? Then you will get, uh, then you will get the images of these green glass houses. They are made for plants to uh, get productive more. Okay. Do anyone of you have any doubts? No, ma'am. No doubts. Okay. Okay. So I'll I am taking the sessions on Tuesday and Thursday. So you might you might take the topics of biology which you want to get understood or which you in which you have doubts, so that we can get the, them clear here. If I can't clear those doubts, then I can note them down and I can clear them them in the next class. Okay. From the next time, just note down the doubts that you have in biology and we can clear them up in the Tuesday and Thursday.